are Labour where they need to be, broadly speaking, going into a general election year? Broadly speaking, yes, Nick. Uh, sustained poll leads in double figures. Their opposition are killing themselves, falling apart, disintegrating. Rishi Sunak's popularity ratings are below Boris Johnson's just after he resigned. So they look forward to next year with the expectation of winning the election and getting a working majority. Where... There will be some concern in Labour, and I think they've built this in. You, and they, you anticipate, we know yeah. each other so well, you yeah. anticipate they, my yeah, question. They, yeah, yeah, they, <laughs> they, they, they know they have to do. To seal the deal, you have to get more people to want to vote Labour rather than vote against the Why is that an issue, do you think? But they haven't clinched it yet because they haven't set up enough policies you could sell in a couple of minutes on the doorstep. You've got to have, I, I think, uh, very vivid reasons to vote. Put money in people's pockets, sort out the NHS, they, uh, deal with migration. They're the three big issues. But you know, Keir Starmer and Labour now look like the future and the Conservatives are looking like the past. Let's bring Natasha in. Do you get the sense when you speak to your Conservative colleagues and contacts that they, they, they realise they really are up against it now? Yeah, definitely. But I think that they still think there is a narrow, albeit closing, uh, path to victory. Uh, and obviously it all depends on what happens in those election campaigns. We know from 2017 and 2019 as well, a little bit to an extent, that these things can turn around and unravel in the space of a few weeks of an election campaign. But yes, I think, uh, I agree with Kevin, that Labour really need to now say the why, why Labour, rather than just why not the Conservative Party. And we've seen Keir Starmer has made such huge strides in the past couple of years to making Labour a decent, electable, uh, credible alternative once more. But now people are going, OK, well, this guy, how is he different from the Conservatives and what is he really going to do for me? And that's where Labour have the risk of tripping up over their actual policies. And we have not seen enough of them. And the Conservatives, once we do see them, will be trying to rip them apart and trying to pick so many holes in them. We haven't quite got to that stage of the campaign yesterday. Just yet. I think that conservative path to a narrow victory is probably no wider than a tightrope. <laughs> <laughs> and Rishi Sunak keeps falling uh, falling off it. I think La Labour, it's the electoral cycle. Labour will prepare for an election in May, but many of them think it will be in the autumn. So you don't show your hand too soon to try and clinch that deal because the opposition can, as you, as you say, attack your policies. They can also steal some of them. And they have been. They have been doing, you know, the Conservatives have been stealing policies left, right and centre for, for the past year. And, you know, Labour can come out and go, yes, well, that's our policy. You've nicked it. Um, but they do have to really set out a, a why. And at the moment, it just feels that there are still quite a lot of people out there that don't know who Keir Starmer is, that don't know, really know what he stands for. And we do see people like Sir Keir Starmer trip up. Like we saw him trip over, over Gaza and Israel. And we saw that interview that you did, Nick, dominate and still is dominating news agenda. People are still calling for him uh, to set out exactly what he wants on that Israel ceasefire. And I think the Conservatives think, well, hope and pray anyway, that as we get close to election, those opportunities for Keir Starmer, once he does stand up, up to be that statesman-like leader and, and that prime Minister and waiting will face more of that scrutiny. But those slips are very election. rare. Just, I'll bring you in a second. Just, um, just, just to remind listeners, of course, not everybody, that was, of course, the interview at the party conference when I asked the Keir Starmer about the uh, the Israeli action. He said a nation has a right to defend itself. But then when I pressed on the idea of switching off the power and switching off the water, he repeated the line, the nation has a right to defend itself. Kevin, come back in. Yeah, I just wanted to no, remind no, listeners. Kevin. No, he botched that. And he subsequently suffered ten resignations from his team. Didn't dent his authority at all. You could see he was still in command, he st stuck to his guns, carried on with that, that policy. And if you look at the, you know, the, the leadership of Keir Starmer, he was very unlucky in one sense to come in at COVID when he couldn't make his must have been mark. How long, he couldn't see people in the flesh for about uh, 12 months. And he, and he suffered and Labour lost the Hartlepool by-election in 2020 when well, there was you know, some chat about will he survive as opposition leader. But he really was just incredibly lucky the following year, the year of the three Prime Ministers. Yeah. Uh, I've referenced Liverpool. Natasha, I will bring you in a second, but Kevin's probably been going to uh, Labour Party conferences for many more years than is healthy for him. There did seem to be a mood this year. And I tell you what I also picked up, there were more business uh, demonstrations and, uh, and, and stands, I'm so sorry, business stands in, in Labour than there were in the bloody Tories. No, that's right. It was more like a CBI conference yeah. than a Labour conference under Jeremy Corbyn. Yeah, exactly. uh, you're, you're right, corporate Britain can, can scent and smell uh, the change. And they're relaxed, clearly yeah. they're relaxed. And money's following power because he's taken Labour to the centre. They're just left of centre now and Rachel Reeves, the Shadow Chancellor, will be an Iron Chancellor. It'll disappoint people on the left who are calling for incredibly uh, r radical progressive change. That won't be delivered. It'll be far more evolutionary than re revolutionary and it'll be incremental. Yeah. 
but you're right, he doesn't pass up an opportunity to speak to business groups. And he's with them. I was I was up in the northeast of England recently, northeast Chamber of Commerce. I was speaking to it in Gateshead. He'd been my warm-up man, Keir Starmer, a month uh, earlier. But they said he just worked the room. And he's much better he's in got, real life. He's much better in person say, talking to yeah. him. They don't, like, you know, putting him on the TV all you want, it's not what Labour need to do. He needs to get out and knock those doors and talk to people. And they realise that he's a bit more of a normal human being than he comes across. And I think we've been seeing this the past few weeks at Prime Minister's Questions. He's really stepped it up. His jokes are better. His delivery is better. I don't know who in that team is rewriting his PMQ scripts, but it's so much Confidence. better. Confidence. Yeah. In, in our treats, Rishi Sunak with contempt. It's, uh, he, he's the past, I'm the future. Yeah. You can't get too confident, though, because that is when you risk tripping up. If you become cocky and you become complacent, and you know, people, people will catch you out at the ballot box. But uh, I think there is no sign of that at all with Keir Stormer. It was it's about just, this time last DNA. year at the conference, I felt. I felt like Labour conference, mm. while, the, while the Tories and Trust were disintegrating, Labour did get a bit overconfident. Having, and there was this air of, we're going to win, rather than, we think we're going to win. Having the benefit of seeing him most every month to me and i'll come to you in a moment i think he's actually enjoying it now in a way he wasn't 12 months ago and the fact that he's enjoying it shows that the, to for your point he's a better performer because he's yeah. actually enjoying the gig Kevin. i think that's absolutely right he, t he took out he took over at a difficult Huge. period yeah. uh we mentioned covid it was the corbyn period and be some legitimate quest questions and criticism of him that he hasn't fully explained a lot of his u-turns on the policy positions after he won the labor leadership with one agenda and is now pursuing another agenda publicly but there is nothing like success no, to breed success exactly, exactly, exactly. and he I don't, I don't believe he's getting the tape measure out for the down the street curtains but he's certainly rattling those black mm -hmm. metal gates let's not forget um, the position that Sir Keir Starmer was in when he took over the Labour leadership and I think there were many people at the time that thought he was going to be just this transition leader that was going to turn the party around, get it back on a fighting footing and then pass the reins and the mantle over to someone else who was then going to go on and win the election uh, after that. But to credit... To be, to, for his credit, he's done that in a much quicker timetable than I think anybody, including himself, had really planned for. So this has all gone quite speedy for him. And I think there will be some slight nervousness that maybe things have gone a little bit too quickly and they're maybe not that prepared to win an election. It would be one of the most extraordinary changes in a single term of a parliament in a, exactly. in a, in a political party's fortunes when you go from the fewest MPs since 1935, Labour, yeah, of course. below 200, of course. to getting your leader into Downing Street as the Prime Minister with, I would think now, I, I did wonder whether he'd win a majority at one point, but I think now the Conservatives are, are, are doing so much damage to themselves and he can, he has his hand to play on his election pleasers yet, so he's managed to get these big poll he's leads got, He's got so far, but... Showing, so, he, yeah. so he's got, he's got some, something left in his tank.